Hola mis queridos, como estas mi amolicia? Hello my kittens, how are you? My name is Allison and today we are playing Nancy Drew the Shattered Medallion. Oh my gosh, I am super excited. Surprisingly enough, I do have the collector's edition of Shattered Medallion. I actually had to check because I couldn't remember. So let me tell you the difference between collector's edition and the regular game. It actually solely depends if Nancy has a cell phone in the game. And surprisingly, she does in this one. Which is odd, because normally in reality TV shows, you don't. This show actually requires one. So on her cell phone, she gets mini games, phone charms, as well as random texts either from Nen Nickerson, her boyfriend, or as I like to call it, romantic friend. Bit of a pet peeve of mine because of the book series. Or the random texts could be from either Bess and George, her close friends, or the Hardy Boys, Frank and Joe. And I think those might be the only ones. But in this one, I don't think there are random texts. Um, actually, wait, no, I think there is from Bess. I could be wrong on that, though. I'm not going to tell you everything, though, uh, about that, about Bess, or about the plot, I should say, because it will spoil things of why I love this game so freaking much. And I am not talking about the puzzles. The puzzles are actually pretty difficult in this game. Oddly enough, I don't have a sheet for the Shattered Medallion in my cheat book because I keep forgetting to put down the notes that I have for it in that book. So I am going to have to play ahead for this one so that I can actually put down those notes in the cheat book so that I can use it in the playthrough of this. And hang on, I forgot to tell you, <laughs> because of the collector's edition, there are awards, which goes with every single game normally, the awards room doesn't show up until game number 28, Ghost of Thornton Hall, which I think is a super sweet thing that I think Her Interactive did, and I'm really glad they did because it really shows how unique they are when it comes to <laughs> making the trophies, because you actually get to see their creativity, how unique they are with their games. Sorry, <laughs> I'm stuttering here. So with the phone charms, it's always a different symbol because it usually focuses on the theme of the game. And in Shattered Medallion, we're on a reality TV show in New Zealand. So I think this is a kayak. I could be wrong. There are actually two new features in this new interface that has been added. And this new interface was put into their Nancy Drew games. I believe in Tomb of the Lost Queen. I forgot what number game that is, only because that casing is like lying around my apartment somewhere. I have not put it back with the Nancy Drew game collection that I have. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't done that yet. So one of the features is the hint system. And the hint system actually is relevant to the spoiler-free achievement. Now the spoiler-free achievement is basically not using any hints at all during the entire game. That is not referring to going online, using a walkthrough or anything like that. It is referring to the hint system. And I will show you once we're in the game, which I'm super excited about. There's the teaser, bonus art. Wait, bonus art, really? I guess they decided not to do outtakes. That's interesting. All right, so for the options, this actually shows the second feature that, I was that I'm telling you about, the fast convo. I am going to actually leave it on so that I can show you what it's like, and uh, I will turn it off once I'm done explaining it in the game. Okay, that should be good. So I do want to point out one thing. I'm not going to do warnings like I did with the Silent Spy. Gotta admit, there is at least one warning. Shattered Medallion, like I said, is of a reality TV show. And with that, I want to remind you that this is purely fiction. This is not based on any real reality TV show. Do not take any of this seriously, and please do not act on anything that remotely looks like fun. I'm sorry to say it like that, but <laughs> a lot of these activities are dangerous, and you want to make sure that you take every safety precaution when it comes to these activities. I don't want you, my beautiful kittens and viewers, to get hurt. <laughs> Well, this is the first video of the playlist, so let's get into the game. <laughs> we're not going to load because we're just now starting. This is also one of the things I actually really like about the Nancy Drew series. This has been a thing since the beginning of the game series. You can choose from two levels, Amateur Sleuth and Master Sleuth. With Amateur, you get regular puzzles, hints available, detailed task lists, and I will actually explain the hints, like I said. 
With Master Sleuth, you get more challenging puzzles, no hints, and basic task list. In my opinion, the basic task list is no task list whatsoever. Because I have done Master Sleuth before on a couple of other games, and oh my gosh, it is super hard for me. I need a task list, otherwise I'm going to be clueless when I get back to the game. If I don't do it in one sitting, I'm just clueless. So if ever I'm going to do Master Sleuth with all of these games on my channel, they're going to be live streams. All right, so let's actually go ahead and get into... Oh, wait, I'm supposed to hit new. Ugh. Here we go. All right, Nancy, after years of trying, I finally got George a spot on her favorite adventure reality show, Pacific Run. You have no idea how excited she is to have you on her team. This season's Pacific Run takes place in New Zealand, so pack your bags and get ready for action. I've been telling everyone I know you're going to be this season's winners, so don't let a best down. If you've been training as much as George, there's no way you'll lose. I can't wait to cheer you two on from the comfort of a swanky hotel, I hope. Go Team Tui! Bess. Oh my gosh, I love Bess. Oh, you can barely hear that. This season of Pacific Run is holding nothing back. Let's meet the contestants who are about to take the ride of a lifetime. Former rugby star Patrick simply wrote, No known allergies, cannot swim. Huh? Kiri, team Tawaki. She broke hearts on date panic, climbed to the top single-handedly in Biggest Cheater. And along with partner Aaron, she's here to make her mark on the country she calls home. Next, Lena, team Kia. International cryptology consultant by day, quote unquote, none of your business the rest of the time. Delightful. Next up, a Delightful young woman indeed. after my own heart. My personal favorite, George Fane. Let's call that good. Okay, I'm Sunny. I'm Sunny? the line producer. Everyone has a game phone. Keep an eye on your phone for updates from the announcer. When you get a medallion, bring it back to the stand. The producer areas are off limits. Very off limits. I get you. The rules ya. are in your tent. Read the rules. Got it. The first team to finish a stage gets the highest score. Second team gets the second highest and so on. Keep an eye out for extra missions. Sometimes the perks will be even better than the points. You can still win coming in second or third once in a while. My plan requires many specific talents. I well, see a sunny. I'm not supposed to hear that. I have to go. Yeah, that's your avo and way we're of off. avoiding. Time for our teams to build up some steam. Solve the Rails puzzle to find your very own Pacific Run data chip. Guard it with your life. Your team chip will give you access to new locations to explore, puzzles to solve, and challenges to overcome. And we're automatically put into our time first puzzle. Time to get puzzle. these tracks together. Yeah, time to do that. So, <laughs> we're thankful that we get two tracks automatically locked in. Uh, we don't actually have to be speedy with this game. Actually, everything is linear. Um, well, like, when it comes to like the actual plots, the the actual plot of the game, I should say. So these two actually are supposed to be aligned. Um, I believe that goes there. No. Yes. That does not go there. Um, actually, I think that goes here. Um, does it? No. Here. Where's the other piece that has the corner? Oh, flippity flappity, come on. There we go. Flippity flappity, don't come back. There we go. Yes, gotcha. Uh... Oh, right, okay. There we go. Choo choo choo. This looks useful. Definitely. Congratulations, Team Tui. You've solved the trains. Actually, let's start from the beginning. 
Oh, that is the beginning. You, to win your first medallion piece, use the chip to access other locations and find the following five plants. Mounts Cook, Lily, Waterfall, Fern, Picao, Kakabik, and a Spider Orchid. Place the plants in the correct face on your team's plant stand. There's an item in your tent that will help. Got it. Ooh, look at that. Pretty. Okay, so these are the mini games that I was talking about. Um, and all of these games are actually from previous Nancy Drew games. Double Take, that's from Warnings of Waverly Academy. Renograms, this is actually a real live game outside of the Nancy Drewverse. And people actually really like this game, others don't, it's an opinion. <laughs> but Renograms have been used in Trail of the Twister as well as Shadow at the Water's Edge. This was used in Trail of the Twister as well. This was used in Alibi and Ashes. Captive Curse, Daily Device, Color Block, I do believe is in multiple games, similar to the one I mentioned earlier, Randograms. I think there might be more than two games that this is connected to, though. But the two that I'm familiar with are Captive Curse, as well as Daily Device, that's what it was. I could be wrong, but it might have been Ransom of the Seven Ships, but that's an actual Sudoku type of color block. And panel. This is from the previous game, actually. Silent Spy. Nice. Alright. Phone. Looks like we can only call George. Um, we will get more messages and in, in not just from Pacific Run. This is actually Nancy's diary. We can actually go back to this for notes if we wanted. Um, I hardly ever use it. So this is the task list. This is the hint system that I was referring to. And uh, I'm not going to click on them only because this will ruin the spoiler-free achievement that I really want to go for in this game. I actually was able to get it in Silent Spy, which is super exciting. I thought I ruined it. So basically what happens is you click on these question marks if you ever get stumped on any of the tasks and you want to basically cheat to get those tasks completed. Now there are times where it will just have one basic hint and other times it will have um, it will have one hint and it has like a little bar underneath it that says show another hint and it'll have like a loading bar on it and it'll repeat like that until it has like a red box that says show me the solution. You, I'm sure you get what I mean. So I currently use the task list right now in the playthroughs at the beginning of each video to let you all know what we've done in the previous video. That way I don't mess up of what I need to get done. Or at least I can remember what I need to get done in the current video. So we are now here where everyone is. Well, mostly everyone. Let's actually go into our tent. Make sure we have everything. Native flower flora of New Zealand. Nice. We will go through the details on that later. Uh, we we're kind of getting close to the end of the video here. Pacific Run show rules. Let's basically go through this now. This is basically an introductory video. We're not going to be actually moving the plot. I'm not going to insert this to where it actually belongs. Probably until the end of the video. Section 1, Pre-Arrival. Contestants may only bring pre-approved items to camp. Teams will be provided with a game phone for communication between contestants and receiving stage instructions. Personal cell phones and other mobile devices are prohibited. Yikes. Contestants requiring medical attention during the game will be evaluated by the production's medical staff. If injuries require the withdrawal of the contestants, the contestants' teammates may choose to continue solo or opt to withdraw from the competition. Competitors are strictly forbidden from entering the crew side of camp at any time. <laughs> Each team will be assigned a tent in camp, activity stands in the field, and a room in the puzzle palace. Teams are not allowed to enter or tamper with another team's area. Enter or tamper. Hmm. Section 2, Competition and Medallions. 
Pacific Run is divided into five stages, with one hidden medallion fragment in each stage. The first team to return the current stage's medallion to the medal stand in the center of camp wins that stage. The winning team is the team to return all five medallions and have the most points. Challenges must be fully completed in order to unlock the next challenge. No player shall remove a medallion in the course of an active competition segment that does not belong to their team. I am stuttering. <laughs> At the end of a stage determined when the first medallion piece for that stage is returned, all teams are recalled to the base camp. At that time, the two teams with the lowest total points will be eliminated. Help from the non-participating teammates in individual challenges is forbidden. Got it. Uh, section 3, points. Uh, these are pretty simple to understand. Award bonus scorecard, points bonus scorecard, deduct bonus scorecard. Do these at any point throughout the game. And these are the teams. George and Nancy, friends. Ooh, Nina and Patrick are dating. Ooh, there's a team that's actually married. And newlyweds. Cool. One of these, I don't remember who it is, but one of these guys, Colin, huh, is the same person who voiced the victim in Deadly Device. I'm not going to say actor because he's originally an employee of Her Interactive. He, he doesn't normally do voice acting, at least as far as I'm aware. I don't know. All right, we are kind of getting close to the end of the video. Um, I'm not going to talk to George. Let's look at this. All right, and here's the points. Nice. This must be the show's confession booth. Hmm. Nah, I'll just stick with talking to myself. Eh. I think I will use the confessions booth if ever I'm on a reality TV show. I'm actually thinking of doing Big Brother, but I don't know. I'd probably get kicked off like the first week or something I can't do that now oh yeah cuz Patrick's there all right um there are a couple more places we can go to looks like Ooh. I can use our points to buy things yeah we definitely will need that we could get that at some point need to earn more points first I can't go below 50 got it okay No one's here yet. New Zealand sheep farming. Ooh. And what's over here? I'm probably missing phone charms already. Um, I mean, this is the plant we're supposed to pick up, so I might as well. This is actually one of the games, one of the mini games that we can play throughout the game that'll actually help us earn points, which is actually really nice. This is actually one of the games that are actually from another Nancy Drew game, I should say, and it's from Captive Curse. This is actually one of my favorite games from Captive Curse. Mini games, I should say. Monster. It's actually pretty easy to do. Do we have time? Um, it's kind of a quick game. Let's do it. So you're basically trying to... When you're the monster, you're trying to kill off as many cows as you can. But you want to make sure that the other person doesn't know which how you are because you're basically ah nice you just killed off okay uh, 
Ha ha ha. Sucker. Um. Uh, should probably use this monster to make him off track. Bum, bum, bum. Are you okay? Are you okay, Eddie? Ouch! Yeah, here's the scoring. Um. Yeah, this does kind of limit me. Dang, dude! So when you're the good person trying to find the monster, I mean, this is my method. You you can come up with your own method. My method is to outline basically the whole board and make sure that there is, I mean, <sighs> yeah, see, I will pass. Yeah. Pass. Dude, you are- <laughs> I told you, this is easy. <laughs> of course, I did choose easy mode, so... Heck yeah. Extra points. Alright, um, there is this room, which is cool. Basically, an earthquake machine. And we are getting close. To, we are pretty much at the end of the video. I'm just trying to kind of. Sure yeah, I mean, it is basically like an earthquake preparation room. So basically, the best way to be prepared for an earthquake is to hide under the table. I don't know why Nancy's not able to do that. I remember being able to do that. I. Hmm. I need to keep an eye on this. It looks important. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, this, these are interactive, which is nice, and we can always look at these for information. I will actually leave this on for a second longer so that you can pause it and read it yourself. I'm not going to be reading these things because they're just extra information. They're not actually relevant to the game. Yeah, fault lines and the trench. Oh. Tsunamis. That's, this is how tsunamis work. Oh, wait. Stop it. There we go. Landslides. Yeah, these are pretty dangerous. Um, there is another mini game. I don't know where it is. There it is. Pacific Run. This is also a mini game from Captive Curse. It's actually a pretty difficult game. It's also a rather long game. Even on easy mode, it's actually pretty difficult. And it's basically RNG. You just gotta hope for the best, basically. Alright, so I believe that is it. The last spot to go to... Looks like I'll need something to activate that. Which we will need this for. So, oh. I will actually go ahead and save it here, because we do need to get going. Starting off. Simple as that. And I will save again. Just to be safe. Alright, so that is it. My oh my. I know I talked quite a bit at the intro, and I know I talked quite a bit about the hint system, and I never did get to show you the fast combo feature. That's a little sad. I probably could have called George Fane about that, but I could have actually talked to George, but I actually decided against that because it's kind of moving the plot. And I did say this was going to be a starting video to the game, basically. We already know the intro to the plot. I'm just slowly introducing you all to what is so cool about this game. I'm not yet going to tell you, even though we kind of have already been introduced to him. 
yeah, I'm not gonna say anymore. <laughs> I am biased. I'm completely biased. You'll understand why I'm completely biased. And it will be, I think it will be shown in the next video, if not in part three. Most likely part three, actually. I'm not sure if it'll be in part two, if memory serves me right. I mean, Shattered Medallion is a pretty long game, so. But if you do it on a speed run, it's like an hour and a half. That's because of the fast combo feature, of course. Anyway, as I keep saying, I better get going. I love you all, my beautiful kittens and viewers. I hope I helped you out at least a little bit, um, at least starting off. If not, I am not doing my job. <laughs> and I will talk to you all in the next video, which will be Nichiru, the Shattered Medallion. Uh, hey ho! Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and on that note, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, smash that like button like a kitten would. And if you're just now tuning into this channel, go ahead and c -c click that ugly red subscribe button to make it that beautiful gray, as well as the bell icon right next to it. That'll notify you of all the videos that I do, which are on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Sundays, rarely Fridays. And I hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. I am Sweet Rescue Rabbit's Fun World, saying goodbye. Stay awesome and stay on YouTube! Are you okay, Yanni? Yippin' a smooth criminal. Those are two completely different songs.